forests has always been very close to my heart. I grew up at a farm 40 kilometers south of Gaff Gaffenburg. When I was little, I played in the forest. I climbed the trees and built tree houses. And when I got older, I started to work and hunt in the woods, which meant I got to see many different types of forests. Oak forests, beautiful ones, birch forests, mixed forests, and plantations. I realized that the forest could change rapidly, literally from one step to another. On the one side, you can have a vibrant mixed forest, and on the other, you can have a dark monoculture with no undergrowth at all. I was 16 when I started to work in the forest together with my grandfather. He was taught forestry during the 50s and 60s, when clear cuts and spruce plantation was the tune of the time. Leaf tree was at the time seen as a weed that was sprayed away with poison or cleaned away by hand. So, one day at the coffee table, I asked him if forestry couldn't be done in another way. Do we have to cut down the forest and turn it into a plantation? Yes, he said, bumping his fist to the table. Clear cuts and plantation is the only rational and thereby profitable way of forestry. And that you must understand. Well, what do you reply to something like that when you're 16? At the time, I didn't reply at all, but the question never left me. Forestry forms the forests all over the globe. Roughly one third of all land is covered with trees. But what is a forest? What does something have to contain to be called a forest? Trees, of course, but uh, animals, some other plants, a certain level of biodiversity. Is this a forest? Or is this forestry? I would call them a plantation and a clear cut, not a forest or forestry. I was sitting at a cafe in Visby, together with the manager of one of the biggest forestry companies in Sweden. It was a good atmosphere and a warm tune in our conversation. We were talking about forestry and forest development history. And he told me that the first really big clear cuts, they were made by hand here in Sweden and skidded by horses before the big machines entered the forestry. And then we talked about the different forestry methods have been used over the years. And that we now here in Sweden, for 50 years, have based our forestry upon clear cutting and plantation of conifer trees, like spruce and pine. And then he looked at me with a peaceful belief and said, one ought to be careful with a method that works. I still wonder what he meant with works. For me, forestry embraced far more than the growing of timber. For me, forestry encapsulates biodiversity, humans and animals. For me, isn't this a forest? It's a plantation with a negligible number of ecosystem services. A forest is a living organism that has evolved over millions of years with hundreds of thousands of species, turned out to a unique composition that is special for each site and condition, like this. My question when I was 16 was if forestry couldn't be done in another way. In the 80s, there was another man asked himself the same question. It was in Germany, after they had got several large storm damages, 
large enough to affect the economy in their forestry. So, he continued the thinking and realized that trees is actually growing almost everywhere in our part of the world. We actually constantly have to do things if we don't want trees to grow. Abandoned grazing lands are turning into forests. Ditches along the roads has to be cleaned, otherwise they will by time be full of trees. So the question was not if trees can grow by themselves. The question was, is it possible to form a profitable forestry upon the principle of nature? And um, to understand what turned out to be called close to nature forestry, we start to have a look up opposite, the plantation forestry of today. Then the idea is that you each year cut an area with big trees, like I showed before, or a bit bigger. And then you plant new ones. And then the idea is that you manage them in such a way, by cleaning and thinning, that they all will be ready to be cut again at the same time. And then you repeat the system. One creates monocultures, plantations, with very little room for nature, and thereby for ecosystem services. In close to nature forestry, the idea is that you want a mixed, vibrant, vital forest all over. Big trees, small trees standing side by side. How the forest will look depends on where we are in the world, the soil condition, water, everything. And then you carefully harvest and thin among the biggest trees in such a way that the natural ecosystem can maintain and develop at the same time we harvest some trees. Today is ecology and production two separate questions. Actually, it's two separate areas. The NGOs is fighting for more nature and the industry for more production. My vision is a forestry where nature and production walks hand in hand. Actually, where a vital ecosystem will be the natural foundation for all production. One day, I was standing in the forest in Lübeck with the manager, Mr. Storm. We were talking about biotope trees and nature conservation. And I asked him how many biotope trees they save on each hectare for, for nature. And then he said, no, the number of biotope trees is not an important question. What did I say? To set aside a certain number of biotope trees is a very important question. No, he said. The constant presence of big, full-grown trees with thick bark and dead branches. That's the important part, not what you call them. Then I understood something. It's not about a number, it's about a principle. The principle of minimum interference. To base the forestry on the principle of nature and do it in such a way that the natural ecosystem can maintain and develop at the same time we harvest some trees. Fifty years ago, clear cuts and spruce plantation was in one way rational. The industry at the time could only make use of spruce and pine. Ecosystem services was not the question. Neither was bioenergy. Today it's different. The industry can make use of many tree species. Ecosystem services is a big question. And bioenergy is rising. Now after 20 years, by using this principle in Lübeck, the result is even better than the prognosis. The income is good, biodiversity is rising, people around it loves it, and even the NGOs gives it their support for its ability to combine nature and production. I have a dream of a living forest all around to show people what is possible to inspire and thereby step by step change the forestry. Nature is working 24-7 to fulfill itself. The only thing we have to do is to watch and learn and to take out a new direction that allows nature to appear everywhere. And ecosystem services, it's far more than a modern name. It's beautiful, it's great, and it's a foundation for human life on Earth. Thank you.